Now today we're going to talk about a fancy term called reductions. That just means these are cheats. These are the little things that we do as native North American speakers to cheat so that we can speak faster, so that we can help link what we're saying together and it sounds a bit more fluent. And once you understand what's going on, you will identify it immediately in other people when you're speaking. And if you start to implement what I'm teaching you here, it will dramatically change your speech. So welcome back. I am Rebecca Bauer. I am an English pronunciation coach, accent modification instructor. I'm also a speech language pathologist and author, and I'm just here to share everything I know so that I can help and reach as many people who are struggling on a daily basis to be understood. Because I know you've worked really hard at learning another language. You've put a lot of effort into it. And now you're just looking to get that high level of English pronunciation and you want to learn all these little tricks of things that you hear in conversation that just don't make sense unless someone explains it. So that's where I come in. So an example of a reduction, let's say for example, the word and, A-N-D. When someone's speaking, they're not physically saying and all of the time. Probably 80% of the time, they're actually saying mm, just the N sound. So you don't necessarily hear me say, red and blue, you would probably hear me saying red and blue, red and, red and blue. Or I need a pen and paper, unless I'm being extremely clear, which I try to do my best when I'm doing these videos. But in a typical conversation, I'm going to say pen and paper, pen and paper. I'm just saying an N sound, N. Mm. That is what a reduction is. So today we're going to go through some of the most common reductions in English. We'll get some good examples, we'll get some good practice in, then I want you to try it on your own, okay? So let's practice some and examples. Hot and cold would be pronounced hot and cold, hot and cold. Black and white, black and white. Mmm, black and white. Open and shut, open and shut, open and shut. Mm. I'm just making an N mm sound. We'll do one more. High and low. Most of the time you will hear high and low, high and low, mm. high and low. Another reduction that native North American speakers use is the word for, F-O-R, produced as a very quick, for, F-R. If you think of just getting rid of the vowel, for, 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 for. Um, you could also think of it like fur on an animal. Fur, they have fur. So instead of saying for, typically you will hear a reduction, fur. It's for me will often be pronounced as fur. It's for me, it's for me. It's for her, it's for her. For her, for her. A presentation for the company, a presentation for the company, for, for the, for the for the company. So you will often hear that. Another common reduction is your. Notice we'll be doing a lot of ors. Your to your. Y-E-R sounding. Your, 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 your. If it's your company, I might say it's your company. Your, it's your company. Your, 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 your. Very fast, reducing that O oh, amount of work we do. Your. Okay, it's your company. What's your number may sound more like your. What's your number? Your, your. It's your turn. You might hear, it's your turn, your turn. It's just a little quicker to get from a Y to R rather than going right to a, another vowel and getting to R again. It's just, it's just quicker. We're lazy, we're doing this quick. Your, it's your turn. Similarly with or, O-R, or is often pronounced as er, pronouncing just the er sound, kind of getting rid of the O altogether, er. Here or there might sound more like here, here or there, here or there. It could be here or there, here or there. <laughs> One or another, one or, one or another. It could be one or another reason. It's one or another, one or another, one or, one or. <laughs> high or low, higher, high or low. Is it high or low? Where's the ketchup? Is it high or low in the fridge? 
er, er, er. The word have is very, very commonly just pronounced as uh, sometimes even of, but you will hear uh. And this is often with could have, should have, would have, uh, coulda, woulda. Shoulda. I should have done it yesterday. I would have done it yesterday. I could have done it yesterday. <laughs> Coulda, woulda, shoulda. That have just turns to a. Uh. That's a really big reduction. The word to, T-O. Now there is an entire rule for this and I can go into greater detail in a further lesson, but you will hear the word T-O pronounced as ta rather than to. The rule here, and we can get into greater detail later, if there is a vowel after it, then just go with two. Like two hour place, two hour place. Then go ahead, say two. But if there is a consonant after this word two, we're going to pronounce it as a ta 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 ta. Think of it as just pronouncing the T. Ta 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 Okay, just the T. So I'm going to go. That two will sound like ta. I'm going to go. Ta go. Ta go. To grab will sound like ta. Ta grab. T. Think of it just as a T. To grab. I'm going to grab it. I'm going to grab it. To grab. To grab. To grab. To grab. The same will be said for words that start with two, like today. 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 I'll do it today. Tomorrow. Ta. Tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. 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 Together. We'll go together. Together. So far, if you found even a tiny bit of this information to be minutely useful for you, please click on that little thumbs up guy, the little mitten hand. Click him because I want to be able to share with other people and I want the algorithm to show it to people who also struggle with their North American English pronunciation. People who feel like their pronunciation is really getting in the way of them being understood. And so if you can help them out by helping me help them, then please do that and I thank you for it. Another very common reduction in English, especially North American English, is the deletion of the H sound in words like he, his, her. And you'll often hear e, is, er for those specific. Okay, think of his and her, he and him, very specifically those words, okay? Not other H words, just these. So I might say, is he ready? And that he, that H will be dropped, you'll hear is he, is he. Now I'm not saying he, I'm saying he, is he. Is he ready? Is he ready yet? Or her will sound more like er. Give her a chair, give her. Give her a chair, give her a chair. His will be is. Those are his shoes, is. Those are his. Those are his shoes. Those are his shoes. <laughs> okay, I dropped that H. Another reduction you might notice is you. Typically you will hear, unless you're listening to me, I often do full pronunciation because I know that many of my listeners are very much hoping for clear, clear speech. But in a typical conversation, I'm going to use the word yeah instead of you. Will you be there? Yeah. Will you be there? Will you be there? Will ya? Will ya? Another reduction that you will very typically see is the word T-H-E the. Now I know many of my clients will use the full proper form the every time they see this word. The, 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 the book, the table, the door. We typically, now we break a lot of rules in North American English, but typically, T-H-E, if there's a consonant coming after that word, we're going to reduce it to a schwa. It's an uh sound, the, the, the. So if I have book, starts with a b, -b, -b consonant. Instead of saying the book, I will say the book. I'm linking it, the book. If I have door, starts with a consonant, d -d 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 -d, I'm not going to say the door, I'm going to say the door, the door. And bottle, b -b -b. I'm not going to say the bottle, I will say the bottle, the bottle. Notice I'm linking it with the next word, the next word. The only time you would typically hear the is when there's a vowel after, the only, or end, the end, or author, the author. It's 
start with a vowel. Okay, so that's the rule. But for the most part, the most part, you're going to hear a th, 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 because there are a lot more consonants than vowels. So you will hear the 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 much more than the 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 the. And if you're only using the, that's fine too. But just know if your goal is a North American English accent and you're trying to get closer, that's one thing to be aware of. So a lot of people come to me with the goal of sounding like a native English speaker. And I want to delve into that topic a bit. It's kind of a big guy. So if that's something that you're interested in, click on this link. I want to talk about some of the myths, but not just the myths. I want to tell you what is possible and it is positive. There are a lot of things you can do, but we want to talk about goals and what is a realistic expectation. So check that video out. If you liked this practice and you want more of it, because I have a lot of practice just like this, go to my website, click the link below. There you will find my book. You will find my audiobook. You will find a course that's available where all the practice is laid out for you with amazing resources. And of course, there's always the option of one-on-one -on -one coaching. And if that's what you're looking for, click below. I'd love to see you there. Otherwise, keep checking out my content. I'm here to give you all the free stuff. I'd love to keep helping you achieve your goals of speaking English with clarity and with confidence. And I want to be the one to help you there, okay? Because that makes me feel good, to make you feel good. That's what I'm here for. I'll see you later. Bye.